On this edition of Awaken the Wonder, my guest was called by God to the ministry at a funeral. You won't believe this story and so much more from his life. Join me next. Hey friends, thanks for joining us on the Awaken the Wonder podcast. I just wanted to tell you about an exciting opportunity you have to join me and my Kingdom Encounters International team in Moravian Falls, North Carolina this January. January 28th to 31st has been set aside for a special Awaken the Wonder prayer retreat. I'm blessed by your interest in joining us in Moravian Falls. This is a place of encounter where many men and women of God have gone for hundreds of years and they've had night and day prayer there for many years as well. The Moravian missionaries came over from Germany in the early 1700s and in that time established 24-7 prayer. It has been a special place of encounter for the Lord in my life, and I want you to join me there so we can talk about the deeper subjects of the faith, things like the glory of God, encountering the Lord through word and prayer, the Holy Spirit, signs and wonders, angels, and how it all leads to a life of evangelism. I know this is going to be a special time of awakening the wonder in your relationship with Jesus, and may He manifest His presence upon your life as never before. I hope you'll set aside these four days to come and encounter the Lord with me and my team on January 28th to 31st. Be sure to go to the website kingdomencounters.us slash retreat, kingdomencounters.us slash retreat, and you can register today. The early bird registration ends on October 27th, so make sure you get over there soon to take advantage of the discounted price. I hope to see you in North Carolina with me. Hey everyone, welcome to Awaken the Wonder podcast with me, your host, evangelist Caleb Wampler of Kingdom Encounters International. I've seen hundreds of thousands of people come to salvation in Jesus in countries hostile to the gospel, witnessed impossible miracles, and regularly experienced God's wonder. This show is an outflow of my life in ministry in the nations. Tune in weekly to hear miracle testimonies and encouraging stories from the fields of harvest from both me and my global ministry network. As we journey ahead, may you hunger for God as never before and awaken the wonder of your relationship with Jesus. But I do want to introduce my guest today. His name is Pastor Caleb Ring. Uh, He pastors a church right here in Florida called the River Claremont. And uh, they are having incredible things happen at this church, but I want to welcome you to the program, Pastor Caleb. So good to be here, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Um, now, you've uh, had a lot of things going on in your life. You came uh, out of a life full of all kinds of things before right. you had a radical encounter with God at a funeral, as I understand it. Sure. Uh, why don't you take us back a little bit to, uh, to the beginning? Uh, take us through your childhood, how you ended up getting into what you got into and how the Lord set you free. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, when I was younger, I mean, we were, I was raised in what you would call a Christian home. But at six years old, my parents stopped going to church because it was just a disagreement with the church, as it happens so often, which is very sad. And sometimes people don't think about the effect it would have on their children. So six years old, I'm basically unchurched all the way until I'm a teenager. Youngest of four kids, grew up on a dairy farm. So I just got totally into everything of the world. You know, I was drinking heavily doing drugs, all sorts of stuff like that. wound up being arrested multiples of times. Uh, And I was 19 years old. My parents had kicked me out of the house, and they were just done worrying about me, you know. And I'm in my room. The room is spinning. Um, I remember I put one foot on the floor to stop it, and just this thought, you know, I was so tired of having to have something in my system to feel like happy or joyous or, or anything. And sometimes people out there, you don't realize it, but you just numb yourself. Uh, and just to try and make you not fill the void. But the only thing that fills the void is the Lord. And so I remember being in my room and I just cried out. And I don't even know where it came from. But I had this prayer and I was like, God, if there's any way you can restore the innocence of my youth back, please do so. And so here I am, I'm like 20 years old, life spiraled out of control, you know, d- drugs, alcohol, that whole thing. And uh, someone invites me to go to church two days after this. And so I'm thinking, man, I did just pray, so maybe I should go. 
So the church they went to was an hour and 15 minutes away. I grew up in Middle Tennessee, uh, and so they were going to a church in Nashville area. And so that Sunday, I remember waking up. I didn't even couldn't remember the night before. Um, I, I was I remember distinctly looking at my phone, trying to figure out where I had been, who I had spoken to, because it was all blacked out from the night before driving to church that day. And in my mind, it's like if you'd have asked me if I was a Christian, I would have said, I'm a Christian, you know, because I did believe in the Lord. But my understanding was God's definitely not happy with me right now. And most likely if I go to church, lightning is going to strike me at the door because I'm a total heathen. And so I'm going through all this in my mind, shame, guilt, anything, and just really just desperation because I wasn't happy. You know what I mean? And um, so I get to church and I remember... Just this, I didn't want to go in. I felt awkward, like the like the, your first day at, at in high school trying to figure out where to sit at lunchtime. Right. And so I'm like hovering outside. There was one other guy smoking a cigarette. And so I joined him, you know, and I was like, uh, I started picking on the church. And I don't know why I did that, but sometimes you do that. You're like, hey, man, you know, this church is lame or whatever, just trying to have fun. And I just remember he cut me off dead short. He was like, do not make fun of my church, man. I love this place. So I was like trying to change the subject and he had these Doc Martin boots on. So I was like, well, nice boots, bro. He's like, you like these boots? He takes the boots off and gives me the boots and walks in the church with socks on. Oh I'm standing there. First time I've been to church since I was like six. Well, I've been a handful of times, but nothing, nothing like in, in, in depth. But now I got this dude's shoes. They won't even fit me. I don't even like them. So I'm like, I got to go in there and give this dude his boots back, you know? So I go in the church building and this guy greeting, he's a good friend of mine still to this day, loves the Lord, on fire for God. He was greeting that day and he was like, hey, hey brother, welcome to the church, you know. And I just remember looking at him and there was such a joy in his eyes and a light. You know, the Bible says the eyes are the windows of the soul and it's so true. Like when you've got darkness in you, there's not this joy looking back, you know. As an evangelist, you know, I do street evangelism and you do too. It's like you can, you meet a person and before you even ask them if they know Jesus, you know if they know Jesus. Right. Because it's like he's looking back at you. This guy had it. And I said out loud, under my breath, I'm like, whatever these people have, I'm going to get it in my life. And uh, it started a journey for me. And it was a long journey. You know, I love the stories of the person that went to church one time. Like God just radically changed their life. And it was like, boom, they were in Bible school two weeks later, ministering a year later. You know, I love those testimonies. But I was not that testimony. And uh, sometimes it takes a little while longer for other people. So if you're going through that process right now, you got a passion for God, but your life is still not in order. You're struggling with these addictions and these things going on. Don't give up. Uh, always, I remember the Lord said, it, know this, when it comes to this, you never lose until you stop fighting. And if you have a desire to fight through that and you want that freedom that only God can bring, you keep coming to God and God will meet you on that road at the time that you're ready for it and your life will be radically changed. Yeah, no, that's so good. I, I remember hearing evangelist Reinhard Bonnke with a group of evangelists and they were asking him questions and they said, how have you been able to sustain such longevity to see the Lord do amazing things? Um, he died at 79 years old just recently, having led 79 million people to the Lord, a million for every year of his life. Maybe that inspires you today. Well, this was the legacy of Reinhard Bonnke. But in this talk, he uh, asked these evangelists and he said, you know, the way that you do it is you just keep going another year. Yeah. <laughs> And you just keep going another year and you just keep going another year. And he goes, before you know it, all of those people that you went to Bible school with, those people that were in training with you, those people you ministered with one by one by one, maybe over time, for whatever reason, good or bad, they just stop. They just stop. Yeah. They just stop. And he said, before you know it, you're still standing there at the end and people are asking you, how did you do it? You know, and he goes, that's how you do it. He's yeah. like, you don't quit. You just keep persisting. And so, so yeah, no, that's so, so good. But Talk to me about that little bit of that journey with the addictions too, sure, because sure. maybe somebody here, they're going, yeah, well, I want to have received an instantaneous, I just got set free kind of thing. But what was that process like? Sure. Yeah. So here I am, I'm going to church. I'm about 19, 20 in that time period, probably 19 turning 20. Uh, I mean, I, I, I used to drink every day and then I would smoke weed, everything. I, I would go to church with uh, a joint ready for the way home. And, and so I'm, I begin this process. And um, for about nine months, I went to church. And it's like every day I was still drinking, every day still doing drugs. So nine months is a long time period. Driving an hour and 15 minutes just to go to church. And so some people won't go five minutes. If you're hungry for God and you want to change, 
put some oomph behind it, you know. And I did that, you know. My life's not great, but I knew I needed something from God. And so I kept going, kept going, and one day I actually got a call from my aunt that she said, um, I just overdosed on pills to kill myself, goodbye. And I hung up, she hung up the phone. My, obviously, that's not a call you ever want. And so I was on the lake with her daughter, my cousin. We, I had jet, my jet ski out. We literally unhooked my jet ski and jumped in the truck and just left it there at the lake and drove as fast as we could to her house. Found her laying on the floor, pills everywhere, a pool of vomit where her body had rejected all the, the medication and she was unconscious but alive. And in the state of Tennessee, it's like it's a prosecutable offense to try and take your life. So they, they actually arrest you for it. So they arrested her but take her to the hospital. Here I am. Um, my life's full of addictions. My life's, you know, alcoholism, drugs, uh, prescription pills, cocaine, meth, everything you could imagine. It's going on in my life. But I had this passion for God, but I can't get free. And so here she's laying there in the hospital bed, handcuffed to the bed, and I'm standing in the room and I just cry out to the Lord. And I'm like, you know what, God? <sighs> for nine months I've came and I don't have the strength, obviously, to live the life that I'm supposed to live. And I was like, I'm sorry. You know, I've cried out for nine months that you would give me the strength. And I said, most likely you gave me the strength, but I failed you and I'm just too weak. And I was like, I'll never have faith for my aunt or anybody else to really get free if I can't get free. And so I basically told the Lord, I'm done. I, I can't go any longer. I feel like I'm just a failure for you. And my phone rings right as I'm pleading to the Lord and talking to the Lord about this. And it was one of uh, the, the youth pastor of the church I was going to. And we were supposed to go on a youth, uh, a youth snow, snow skiing trip that weekend. And I told them, I don't want to go. And they were like, well, you already paid. Please come. And so they talked me into it. I go on the weekend. And I just remember breaking down one night with everybody there. Pray, you know, they were like, what's your prayer request? And I had always had this facade up, you know, and a lot of people have that fakeness when it comes to the Lord, to the church, to believers. You feel like you've got to be perfect in all ways. And then that way you never cry out for the help that you really need. And God knows what you need but you need to just be real sometimes. So I remember I just broke down crying, talking about my aunt, everything I'd just gone through, and everybody gathered around me and began to pray, and it was just such an awesome moment. You know, I really felt the love. I'm crying, and I didn't, I didn't cry. You know, I wasn't a crier, but... So that's like Saturday night. The next day, we get up early, and we drive all the way back to Nashville from North Carolina, and we get in time for the Sunday night church service. And so we go into this church service, and the pastor's preaching a word, but literally in my heart, in my spirit, in my mind, I don't hear anything he's saying. There's just this cry in my heart, like, tonight, God, tonight, God, tonight, God. It's almost like I felt like if God didn't really grab me that night, I didn't know that I could ever make it back there. I didn't know that I would even make it. It was just this, I knew it. So I'm crying out, just the loudest cry, scream from my heart, like, Jesus, Jesus. And I remember just being led, just crying, and I went to the altar. There wasn't an altar call given. I don't even know. He could have been talking about the offering. He could, I don't even know what part of the service we were in. And I just went to the altar of my own accord, and I dropped down that night. And I remember telling the Lord, man, you know, for nine months I've asked you for help. I feel like I failed you. And, and I told the Lord, I said, I, I, you're awesome. Your love is perfect. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. But I... I, I have a life, so I've screwed up with addictions, with everything under the sun. And I just remember pleading to the Lord that night saying, if there's any way you can take the junk of my life and do something with it, I just want you to have that life. And it was like, I came to the end of myself. And in that moment, it's like, I would say that really, that's my born again moment. You know, like I literally like surrendered my life and it was a supernatural moment and I knew what I was doing and I so desperately wanted to honor God and in that moment the power of God hit me like a lightning bolt right on the top of my head shot through my body as I'm kneeling down there and I knew it was like it was like you didn't have to tell me what happened I felt every addiction every identity associated with it every desire was just zapped out of me like I knew I'll never want alcohol I'll never want marijuana I'll never want cocaine 
it was gone, instantly gone, bro. And like the power of God is real. And, and he can meet you right now over this broadcast. You just have to get real with God. I, that's my testimony. I've heard countless testimonies of people like that. He is absolutely alive and well. You just have to get real in your pursuit of God. You know, two keys to anything God wants in your life is get your desire right. You got to want God. And then secondly, like he hit on Reinhard Bonnke, have the perseverance to walk it out. And so, anyways, the Lord hit me that night. God said, I need you to move from where you're living or in two months time, you'll be right back where I just delivered you from because people don't want you to change. And that's just the sad truth. Sometimes God leads you on a journey to get you out of that so that your new identity doesn't get mauled or um, muddied up with the things you used to do. And from that moment on, God took me into Bible college, uh, met my wife, went to Oral Roberts University, graduated, was working in ministry, and then uh, ultimately answered the call of God for full-time ministry in a funeral, which um, is pretty pretty wild. Tell place. me about the funeral, man. Can, that, that, that would, if you're watching, you're like, okay, so where did you get called to God? It's like, well, a conference, a church service, a camp, a retreat. He got called at a funeral. This has got to be good. How did this happen? Sure. So I was working for a ministry. I have a business background. And so I was working in the, in the financial side of this ministry, large ministry, and um, we had to pay for this funeral. It was a minister of the gospel, great man of God, had, I mean, just incredible miracles in his life. I mean, absolutely amazing stuff. But he wound up, unfortunately, dying pretty young. He was in his late 50s, early 60s, somewhere around there, and had a heart attack. And so it was very traumatic for the family, but it also was not expected. So they weren't prepared for it. So financially we as a church and as a ministry were actually paying for it uh, just to help the family out during this time. So I'm overseeing all the expenses of the funeral basically, which is why I even wind up going there because I didn't personally know the guy. So I go to this funeral, you know, and the whole family's there. It was a church he built in in Kentucky. And uh, there was probably, I mean, I would say 400 plus people in the funeral. I mean, the church was relatively full for the whatever size it was. It could have been more. Place was full. It impacted a lot of people's lives, and um, the family's there. People are crying and stuff. But I just remember being hit by this just weighty presence of God. Like, I knew that I knew that I knew. Heaven, I could, it's like I could feel heaven in the room celebrating his life. And, you know, you talk about funerals, and we call them celebrations of life, you know, as you just honor the person. But there is not a greater honor than heaven showing up at your funeral, you know? And in that moment, I, my mind's going because I was raised in an in a, a entrepreneurial family. My dad was a successful businessman. My granddad's successful businessman. Great granddad, successful businessman. So my whole life, I'm juggling this thing. For, am I called to business or am I called into ministry? And I remember I was in Africa uh, years before this and I was like helping a ministry out, doing ministry you know, leading people to the Lord on the streets, leading teams. And I still had this nagging, what am I called to do? What am I called to do? Right. And uh, this man of God that like, I mean, this African that would pray and like a cloud would enter the room. I mean, like intense man of God, you know, he wakes me up one morning. He's like, I woke up at five praying and, and the Lord told me, you have a question. Are you called into business? Or are you called into ministry? And I was like, oh, this is my moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. And uh, he looks at me and he says, the Lord said, it's your choice. And I was like, what a cop out, bro. Like, give me an answer. But I have learned painstakingly through my life how much God honors free will. He wants you to choose to come to him. He wants you to choose. He's never going to force anything upon you. And so many believers are stuck at that waiting on the Lord phase because they're expecting God to just hammer them into doing it. But God's like, look, when you're ready, when you step up, when you're willing and you want it, then I'll, I'll give it to you in your life. So in this funeral service, I start crying, Caleb, like, like bawling my eyes out because the, the weight of, I can live my whole life and make $50 million yeah. and everybody on the world would say I'm a success. But when heaven entered that room, this guy didn't have the money for his own funeral, but heaven showed up. And I knew that's where the whole reality of this whole life is a joke unless you live for eternity. Yeah. doesn't matter what you do on this earth. It's gone like that, bro. And you might have acquired all these great wealth, built this massive business. But if heaven's not going to show up, if you're not 
grabbing the heart of God, what was it all for? Because you will live a lot longer than just what you live in this body. And having that presence of heaven in the place, I knew that's what I want. I want to live my life so that heaven shows up at my funeral. Yeah, Think about on, that. I want like the angels of God, Jesus like stepping forward, you know. And when you read the Bible, when Stephen was being martyred, the word says Jesus stood up. So he went from sitting to he stood in honor, looking down at Stephen saying, that that's a man of faith. That's a man after my heart. And like... That's what I want to live for. And so I'm crying. And I remember it was awkward because I don't know him. Now everybody knows I don't know him. So the family's glaring at me. Like you're out crying his, his wife. And she's like looking at me like, who is this young dude crying? And I'm like bawling. I'm broken. Like, God, I want that. I want you. And so I pull out my phone and I wrote, this day I'm called in the full-time ministry. I will run and not grow weary. And I will never stop until he takes me home. And that was it. I put my phone down and shortly after that, you know, took a little while for my wife to come on board <laughs> and be like, let's do it. Uh, well, we launched out on a crazy journey of just leaving everything, jobs, incomes, put everything we had in storage and headed out across America to light revival fires everywhere we went. Man, that's incredible. Now, in the next episode, we're going to be talking to Pastor Caleb at our next week's show. So make sure you stay tuned. And he is actually going through a lot of different things right now as he has held services continually through the pandemic, through everything that's going on, even held a revival in those meetings and uh, are in the middle of this. And I want to definitely, okay, sorry, <laughs> I screwed that up. So start at like, can you scroll back to like 630? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you do another episode okay. and um, I'll just talk to you about all the other stuff in the next one. But I'm going to ask you about Buddy here and then we'll pray. 630? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you um, for that. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Man, that is absolutely incredible to hear the story there. Now, in next week's episode, I'm going to actually ask Pastor Caleb about the revival services that he has been holding in the middle of this pandemic. I'm going to ask him about a lot of the things that may be considered controversial because uh, in the middle of this, they have continued to hold services, even though it hasn't been popular. They've received some hate mail and some junk mail and people that are coming against them, but they have continued to plow and through it have seen miracles every week, signs, wonders, all kinds of healings. They're seeing people get healed, even of the coronavirus and all types of things like this. So we're going to ask him a little bit more about that in next week's episode. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. But before you go today, Pastor Caleb, we're going to pray for you in a moment. But before that happens, I want to I want to hear the story of Buddy, because you had uh, you'd said when you walked in that day and the person gave you the shoes, you walked in and there was something different about their eyes. Right, and right. you met a guy in Bible college that significantly changed your life. Uh, tell me about him. Absolutely. So I had this roommate in Bible college and maybe you're out there and you, you struggle with like depression, oppression, whatever, just not really what you would call joyous. So he was like always happy. Like always happy to the point of where you thought something, these dudes on something, you know, like this is not natural. You're like, you, he was always excited and he was my roommate. So one night he's snoring like at two, three in the morning. I got to get up at four in the morning. I was so frustrated. I grab my pillow and I just drill him in the face as hard as I can. Like just slam him with my pillow. And like you're talking the middle of the night, abruptly being woke up, and he's like, oh, glory to Jesus, thank you, hallelujah. And I was like, bro, what? Like you just got drilled with a pillow, and you're like praising the Lord for it? So, you know, we the next day I get home from work, and I'm like, you just tell me, buddy, like, what's the secret? Why are you so happy? How do you do this? And he looked at me, and he said, you know, what people don't know is like, um, when I, well, he said, when I first met the Lord, I actually struggled with depression heavily. I was very depressed compared my life to everybody else, didn't feel I was a success, didn't feel I was tall enough, good enough looking, whatever. And he said, I was even suicidal in my life. And then I met the Lord, gave my heart to the Lord. And he said, I cried out to the Lord to help me with that. And the Holy Spirit just instructed him, just start thanking me for everything in your life. You know, just be, adapt this gratitude, like childlike, you know, thankfulness. And so the next day after the Lord spoke to him, he woke up and he's like, you know, thank you for my toothbrush. Thank you for a sink. Thank you for a towel to dry off with. Thank you for clothes to wear. Thank you for a job to go to. Thank you for a roof over my head. And he said before he even got to work, there was such a smile on his face. His, his cheeks were hurting because he wasn't used to it. And it's so true, you know, like 
Just be thankful. You're blessed. I don't care what anybody says. You say, you don't know what's going on in my life. There is blessings in your life. And what you focus on grows. So focus on the goodness of God, the blessings of God in your life, and you're going to see God begin to breathe greater things in your life. But it's just a godly principle. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And if you don't tap into the joy of the Lord, in fact, the Bible says from the wells of salvation, um, with joy you draw from the wells of salvation. So it's like everything God does in you is meant to manifest in a joy which strengthens you in this world against any and all things you go through. And so you look at the world's solution is what? Prescription pills. Yeah. And they hammer it down people to make them feel that way. But God's like, let me fill you with a joy. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And then that joy becomes your strength. And I would much rather be a happy, joyous person than a depressed, heavy person. Amen? That's so good. That's so good. Today, you might be saying, I don't feel this light. I don't know what you're talking about. How do I get this light? How do I get this joy? How do I feel this blessing from the Lord that Pastor Caleb's talking about? Uh, when, when people come at me and hit me in the face with a pillow, I would not be praising the Lord. And, and I don't know what your situation is. Maybe you're in intense persecution in a country that is hostile to Jesus, that's hostile to the gospel. I don't know where you're seeing this around the world, what phone, TV, uh, what, where, where you are in the world as you see this. But my friends, no matter where you are, the Bible says that in James 1.17, the Father of heavenly lights is shining down upon you in whom there is no shifting shadows. Jesus, the light of the world, he paid the price for you. He wants to come into your life right now. And if that's you, just repeat this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Fill me with the light of heaven. Drive out the darkness in my life. Break my addictions. Break my sicknesses. Break my pains. Today, I give my life to you. I believe you came to this earth. You died on a cross for my sins. You rose from the dead three days later. Fill me with your marvelous light. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Pastor Caleb, why don't you just pray for that person who just gave their life to Jesus and for those that have sickness right now? Absolutely. Father, we just thank you for your anointing going over this television show, entering into every body and every mind, Father. We come against every lie of hell. We come against every seed of darkness that has tried to plant itself in their lives and hold them back, whether it's in addictions or plagues in their body, sickness, recurring things, depression, oppression, suicidal thoughts. We bind the enemy now in the mighty name of Jesus. We loose the anointing of God like the oil of heaven to drip upon them and bring absolute freedom in their life. Father, I pray that the power of God would ignite on the inside of them. Just as you touched me with the fire all those years ago in Nashville, Tennessee, touch them now from their head to their toe with the glory of God. May they never be the same again. Thank you for that freedom. Thank you for the revelation. Thank you that you become alive to them and their lives are changed. Thank you for the supernatural joy of God to give them the strength to run their race and not grow weary. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My friends, if uh, you prayed that with us, be sure to reach out to us at that email address on your screen, info at kingdomencounters.us. We'd love to hear your stories and testimonies. Stay tuned next week for more. Thank you for listening to Awaken the Wonder. If you enjoyed today's show and want more ministry like this, please visit kingdomencounters.us where you can find weekly blogs in my latest book, Hunger. Be sure to subscribe and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at the tag Evangelist Caleb Wampler. If the Lord leads you to partner with us in the nations in prayer and giving, visit kingdomencounters.us. I'll see you next time.